Hello, everyone. This is a wonderful day here. We're going to learn something new and do some interactions and a little workshop, get ourselves all jiggered up and jaggered out or whatever it is. I don't even know if I said something offensive. <laughs> Hello <clears throat> to About Time Workshops. It's 10 o'clock in the morning here in sunny, beautiful Salinas, California. I even have a cat um, looking at the bird feeder right here. So thank you guys for joining me. We're going to do a workshop today. This is like my, I don't know, seventh, sixth, something like that. And I like these small groups because it's fun to have a lot of interaction. We have um, two representatives from Cal uh, Colorado, two representatives from North Carolina. And we have Adrian, who's uh, all the way up in Calgary, Calgary, Canada, who's wow. going to learn how to do these <laughs> so that she can roll them out in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> she's already done she did one of the workshops i think you were in the first workshop I did. It was a Zoom. I, yeah yeah so this is a series of workshops um they are i have three written for the audience out there listening all that thousands of people listening to our video right now hello thousands of video people um this is a uh workshop there's three in a row i have not rolled out the second and third on Zoom yet, I wanted to have more people attend the <laughs> one I'm doing today. And what they are workshops about is it's an interaction, okay? I am not here to, to tell you the right answers. This is, I'm facilitating a conversation amongst you guys and how I want you to imagine a fictional or even a real person that is in your life that you're gonna have interactions with on a normal basis, like a coworker, <clears throat> a neighbor, a friend, a family member, that is your go-to throughout this whole workshop. Somebody you're going to see on a regular basis, some somebody you like that you'd like to see often and have conversations with. That is what the whole workshop is about, how to have that conversation with them on some topic that's almost trivial, funny, not super serious, so that you can have a develop um, the words develop the um, the structure so that eventually, if there is a more difficult conversation you have to have with them, possibly about like vaccines or uh, that they can fly without the aid of anything, like jumping off of something, um, then you will have a better conversation with them. And they will come to you and say, I want to have a conversation with you about this thing that I heard. Because the last time I had a conversation with you, we had a respectful um, kind conversation and it wasn't like a, a, a you know it wasn't hot and you know people were yelling at each other or anything like that the idea is, is you want your your friend to save face you want them to come to the realization that that um of whatever it is that you're trying to you're trying to facilitate right okay so we're gonna do that's what we're gonna do today this is interactive so turn off your turn off your uh, mute be on be on live and here's where we're going to go all right so there were readings you don't have to have done them did anybody do them just in case or look at the video oh okay Some of them. wow this is a good group shocked. okay <laughs> so i want you to as we progress through the through the workshop is kind of forget some of it okay because we're rolling it out to you as if you don't know what the end result is, is that there is somebody who believes that there's hair dryers that are causing, I mean, that the hair dryers are involved in these burns. You don't know that at this point. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm looking at my notes. <clears throat> did I give you these notes, Adrian? I think I did. Nope. I will send it over to you right yeah, now. Perfect. So Thank you. So you can look at them as I go. Adrian's Sorry. hoping to, as I said, roll these out in other areas, or maybe when I'm not here, you could actually do these too. Sure. And um, so she's going to see behind the scenes. Yeah, that's the share. It's got a share option on it. Okay. So the notes that you're looking at, Adrian, just for the sake of it, is our notes that I wrote for a live, or if you were doing a live event and right. we're on the red tab at the bottom. <laughs> Okay. So a zoom, obviously there's a lot we don't have to, we don't have to deal with. All right. 
So the session is being recorded. We're going to be able to put this out on YouTube to be able to get more people to be interested in the idea of doing these workshops. My last video I put up um, was uh, flagged by YouTube <laughs> as, as uh, dangerous to their... their um, community standards. Yeah, community standards. You're absolutely right. So, so I had to go in and explain... And I said, please allow a human to read this. <laughs> and, and it worked. They came back and said, oh, okay, okay. But, I, you know, we're not going to get anywhere with debunking or anything if we can't get to a point where we can put, say things and put comment out without having some human being actually look at it to see if it's real. This is ridiculous. Mm. All right. So the goal of this workshop is to become the person that people come to whenever they have questions about weird things. And when I say your friend, this imaginary friend that you have, I want you to think they're woo-minded. They have that, they have that um, propensity to want to go to the magic or to the, to the conspiracy or to, um, you know, a fantasy kind of thing, something that you probably hopefully as a critical thinker wouldn't have gone to, but maybe in your, maybe in your early days. I mean, I know I was definitely woo woo we and uh, the young Susan, very young Susan was uh, definitely that person. So um, I came away from it. Um, I don't know if you guys have had these experiences or not. I'll tell you very briefly that I've had a conversation with somebody on Facebook. We've been having a long time conversation about it. He's not too keen on these workshops because he doesn't really think that you can change people's minds necessarily who are really into the rabbit hole of, of conspiratorial beliefs. And um, he also thinks that, that it's probably a good idea to shame people a little bit, to, to make fun of them a little bit, to to really to pull them out of that rabbit hole. And, mm -hmm. and I'm having this conversation with him. And I don't really think that, I don't think that people usually change their minds when they're shamed. I think they more likely to circle the cognitive dissident wagons and, and to find <laughs> that there's no way that, um, you know, I could possibly be wrong. But if you allow them to save some face and that it feels like they figured it out, then it's like them saying, I'm not dumb. I figured this out. You know, anybody have a thought on that? I agree with you. I think when they stay in those rabbit holes because it's safe, people accept them. And if they know that they try to embrace this thought or idea that they have in the community that they're going to go into now is going to ridicule them why give up everything that they've in like their friendships their yeah. connections with other people absolutely absolutely i think we just saw a video maybe even in in the maybe it was lee mcintyre i i put it in the show notes from cycon and i think he was talking about just that that these 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 other groups are communities. It's where they find their, you know, the flat earth community, the anti-vaccine community that becomes their, their little world. And why would you want to leave that and go into this world where the skeptics are so mean and, and just belittling? Mm -hmm. All right. So we're going to try to keep this two hours. So far, I've done really good. And the nice thing about it is that we have a small group. So I encourage you guys to interact, but just to kind of keep it concise if that makes any sense. All right. So what we want to do is first off, I want to talk, I'm going to put you guys in a breakout room. So you guys are going to talk um, amongst each other and you're going to talk about the do's and the don'ts of interactions with a human being that is somebody you want to remain friends with. I want, um, let me make this, this is quick. I'm doing these very quickly. Okay. You guys, um, Adrian, don't go. So what you're going to do is the first conversation you're going to have. I got to make, I got to mix these here. Um, room one, that's going to be Doug and Faith. I want you to talk about the do's, the things you do. And whenever you have somebody who's going to give you something, tells you something kind of strange. Okay. What are the things you do if you want to continue the conversation with the person? And Linda and Romero, you're going to talk about the don'ts. What are the things you do not do whenever somebody comes to you and has a conversation, uh, wants to have a conversation with you about some odd thing, okay? You you got two minutes, so it's gonna, you're going to go in your room, and then you're going to 
immediately be told to come out. So two minutes, go for it. <clears throat> All right, you guys. So Romero and Linda's group, you did the don'ts, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, Faith and Doug did the do's. Okay, yep. so tell me, tell me, tell me, Doug or Faith, give me a few of the do's. Do you want to do it, Faith? I can do it. We said yeah. we'd, we remain kind of neutral and just act curious and ask them questions to kind of gauge where they are on the spectrum of whatever conspiracy or woo woo that they're at to kind of, you know, ask them ask them their belief systems, why they know what they know, just to get them to open up and ask them questions in relation to that. Okay. Is there anything I missed, Doug? No, I think that was it. Okay, Faith and, I mean, uh, Romero and Linda, would you guys come up with the don'ts? Yeah, we have, uh, like, don't humiliate, don't belittle, and don't dismiss the topic. And, like, don't cite studies or maybe just don't give like just raw information. Uh, yeah. Information overload. Yeah. No, no logical fallacy quoting to people. Yeah. You just invalidated number. That's an ad hominem appeal to authority. You can't do that. <laughs> I understand why we are memorizing those things, and some people are so fixated fixated on them. I just I'm not quite sure. I understand because. <laughs> Who are you? What are you going to do with it? We'll yeah, but, for uh, ourselves, but maybe not in a conversation. What, Doug? It's most people in those kind of mindsets don't have the same hierarchy of ways of understanding, quote unquote, truth as we do. I mean, they're not rational in the same sense that we think we're rational. They have a different way of validating truth claims than we do. Right. And think of it like their skeptical toolbox isn't quite as refined and developed as ours is. So where we're at a stage where we're talking about, am I thinking about, is this an ad hominem attack that I'm doing? Is this a straw man argument that I'm using to rationalize this? They're, they're still at baby steps. They're still learning to walk. We're running the marathon. <laughs> partly, partly, but I think at the same time, a lot of these people will use the fact that something's scientific as proof that it's not true, mm -hmm. because there have been other scientific facts that have been proven not to be true after, you know, the whole idea of um, um, what's healthy and what's not. You should eat this, you shouldn't eat. Well, it keeps changing, so science isn't really valid as a way of truth claims. Fox News, on the other hand, is because it satisfies my emotional need rather than my intellectual need. I am watching the news. Yeah. They, they rationalize it that I'm watching the news. I'm, I'm, I'm watching the news and it told me this, this, and this, yeah. It is the news. It says the word news underneath. Well, and some of it's true. Like if you look at the concept of big pharma price gouging for healthcare, Absolutely. there's some truth into that. But then you... The problem is, is it's very difficult, and even I run into the issue of being able to separate that out from trusting if this, you know, vaccine warp speed was actually a legitimate thing. I mean, there's a reason to have a slight fear to it, but you can't equate that just because they're jacking up insulin prices means we can't trust a vaccine. Right. Yeah. False well, very good. Okay, so we're gonna move on. I will be cutting you guys off, unfortunately. <laughs> Just for time's sake, though, I would love to sit and discuss these things, but, you know, <laughs> fun. so you have some do's and don'ts. You're not to, when you're with a person who's got these interesting claims, you are not to make those sounds like somebody make a sound. What would be one of those sounds? Uh, <laughs> 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 or laugh. Yeah. Okay. So you guys all know that you don't do those. Those are those are out the window if you're going to have a conversation with the person again. All right. So you're going to be like, okay, so I want you to practice, everybody practice respectful nodding. Okay. All right. Very good. You guys got that. All right. Good. We don't have to practice too far. So I want you to imagine 
your you've got your imaginary friend here who <clears throat> co-worker friend uh family member somebody you will see again somebody you will see multiple times and you know you're going to see them you're going to be you cannot avoid this person this is somebody you like and you will want to kind of bring along in a journey now this person has come to you all right and they have their phone and they say check this out i want to show you this now this is on their phone so it's no longer on their body but one day i realized i had this mark on me and let me show you this photo. I took a picture of it and they're showing it to you. What do you think this is? This is this is wild. Okay. That's all you know. You don't know anything about UFOs. You don't know anything about hair dryers. That is all the information they've given you. But you do know that this friend of yours is kind of conspiratory minded, kind of, you know, pyramid power kind of person, you know, new agey kind of stuff. So you already know that in your mind. That that's there. So here's what they showed you is this. <clears throat> and hopefully you can see it well. But these are not, they're they're like partial burns or partial marks. You know, they're not even convinced necessarily that they're mark, that they're burns. They this one's up here. <clears throat> so you guys can see those, okay, correct? Yeah. Somebody has two of them. Where? Up uh higher the on the shoulder yeah. and Oh, I didn't notice it. Yeah, they've got one right up there. Oh, good job, Linda. You're the first person who's ever noticed that. <clears throat> How in the heck they got two? I don't know. But that is all you know is just that they've shown you this photo and they've said, they've only shown you one photo. I just gave you examples of four, but they showed you one photo and you said, okay. And they want to know what you think. So I'm going to put you in your breakout room. <clears throat> And I'm going to move you for a second. And so that would mean, yeah. So I'm going to move you guys over. So again, you've only got a couple minutes. I want you to come back with telling, when you tell me what words you used and what visual, what did you look like as you were talking to this person? What did they say? What did you say? I mean, what did you say to them? That's your goal. Okay, go. Is she carrying groceries? No, she's got a young student. Oh, they look like she's got two bags of groceries. She's like, uh, anyway, okay. <laughs> welcome back, everybody. So, Faith and Linda. What well, first of all, we got confused when you we forgot that it wasn't we it wasn't on this person's body but on the phone <laughs> yeah yeah oh would you wanted to go look at their body oh, yeah i want to <laughs> can you take off your clothes so i can see where it no <laughs> i think that would probably no okay it's on their phone well so what did you guys say um go ahead faith you're the we we <laughs> They said that you know we'd ask them where did they where did they find this picture how did like they come across it um do they know the person what do they think this thing is um kind of what does it look like to you uh how long has it been yeah. there has did it they been... go to the doctor did they have anybody investigate it one looks like it's faded mm -hmm. so when did these occur? How long have they been there? Okay, good. Doug and Romero. Yeah, I think uh, we we just be curious. I guess we start with that. Uh, so your question is the same things like, how did you get that? Do you remember how, how you got it? How long was it there for in your skin? Do you remember if it hurt? Uh, did you get it at night during the day? Doug, you want to add something? Yeah, I had initially thought that um, the phone photograph was of something that had been on the person who was showing whose body. Yes. Uh, that, so so they said, in fact, it was on their body, right? Yes, they said this is on their okay. body. Uh, is, okay. uh, Linda and Faith got that confused, but that's okay, because if you really were talking to a human being, they would have showed you your phone. You wouldn't have gotten the answer. Right. 
yeah, the discussion's the same. Okay. Right. Okay. So you guys have had respectful conversations with the person. You're not belittling in them. You're curious, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mystery. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Oh, what is that? You know, oh, that is weird. I don't know. How come it's a circle? That's really strange. So you're just not coming out and saying something like, you know, why do you bring yourself with a hairdryer? Yeah. <laughs> why do you bring yourself with a hairdryer and tell me it's why are you taking pictures of your hairdryer burns? Yeah. <laughs> you know, no, 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 we're not there. Because again, you don't know that it's a hairdryer burn. You're you're still right. at the stage. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now and you're friend, club stamp. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so now you're at the stage where your friend is feeling a little more comfortable talking to you about these marks on them. And they're going to tell you that they've actually done a little research about the marks that they found on themselves. And they did a Google search and they found a video that they watched. And the video is by a certain person. I'll show you in a minute. And you might have already seen this if you got far enough in your notes of uh, for this workshop. And But what we're going to talk about first is that your friend may not have the Google, you know, the skills that that you have where they find something and it's on the internet. So therefore it is real, right? Okay, so... Keep in mind that this person, your friend, is not got all the same, you know, the skill sets you do. So I'm going to show you this photo. This is from the, um, making it big. This is from the video that this person wrote, uh, watched, okay? So one at a time, I start with Faith. Faith, mm -hmm. your friend has seen this video. All you're looking at right now is this photo. This is a screenshot from the beginning of the event. Tell me what you see from your friend's perspective. That's right. From your friend's perspective, what is it you see? Like. Your friend has found this video on the internet and this is all they've seen so far. What do you think that they're saying? What do you think they're seeing? They're seeing that there's an expert in this. Right. Mm -hmm. um, Why does he look like an expert? Well, he's holding books. And he's old. Yeah. And he's old. <laughs> he must be an expert. He is not, he's, he's got, yeah. Okay, Linda, what else do you see? Um, he's French and uh, you know the he's French like French. Jacques Cousteau, but he's Jacques Vallée for discovering things in space instead of in the sea i don't very good Doug. what else do you see uh, the information down below his name global phenomena recent close encounters um gives you the sense that he's some kind of expert about ufos and um strange phenomena very good romero what do you see in the the global part where He's gone to Europe. He's going to Latin America. So that gives him credibility. Somebody that just stays in in their backyard wouldn't be a knowledgeable person. Very good. You guys, right spot on. So remember that the things that you, you would go immediately to Google who this Jacques Vallée is, you would immediately have normally you know, be, being the skeptics that you are, you would have gone in a different path way probably to investigating who this guy is. But your friend does not see things that way. They see this guy as credible. I mean, like you said, he's holding books. My God, how much more credible can you get? I mean, this is the equivalence of somebody with one of those um, uh, lab coats on carrying a, you know, a clipboard, a clipboard with a stethoscope. I mean, I mean, even the point. This is the same thing. Okay, so we're going to do one more screenshot. <clears throat> this is the man at the lecture. Now, your so your friend has watched this video, and there is a crowd there. You never see the crowd, but you can hear them, and it feels like it could be a thousand people in that room. You're not sure because they never go to the person. They never show you know how many people are sitting there. But here he is on stage, and he's got this tremendously wonderful French um, accent. I'm going to go in reverse order. 
tell me what your friend is seeing from from this screenshot and from what I just said, Romero. Uh, he's wearing nice clothes. He's at a, a podium with a laptop that uh, you know, only like professors do that, that type of stuff. So it was professorial. Oh, yeah. Doug? The same thing. The the fact that he looks like someone you can trust. He's not kind of with the frizzy hair and the crazed look on his face. He looks more or less sane. Linda? Uh, those are good. Uh, sort of a subdued, serious uh, background and colors here. Um, he's got a computer and she uh, has nice eyes. Faith? That somebody spent the time and money to organize a conference like this. They're very, if they're very serious to spend money and time, then obviously what they're talking about should be true. People showed up. Mm -hmm. Lots of people. Some people have noticed this picture and they notice he's wearing cufflinks. It's like, wow. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Looks credible to me. He's wearing cufflinks. <clears throat> good, good observations, you guys. You're right on the right track. Try, when you're talking to your friend about these weird beliefs, Try to look at it from their point of view. That's why I showed you these two screenshots because we are so typical. We're so used to saying, well, so what? He's on stage. You know, lots of crazy people are on stage. doesn't mean that he's real. I mean, look at our administration. We just, <laughs> hey, lady, I'm going to be president. Hey, my God, you know. My point is, try to look at it from the viewpoint of your friend. They are not necessarily have the same skills and the same um, critical thinking ability that you guys have, which you would have Googled and, and found this guy out. Okay, good, good conversation. Now it's going to get a little more weird, right? Your friend has said to you, all right, I trust you. I've been having a good conversation with you. I, you talked to me about going to the doctor, looking at these burn marks and what the heck they are. And, and we haven't been yelling at each other. That's what they're thinking in their mind. I can have I can have a conversation with them, but now they really have this weird question. So I watched this video. Okay. I'm, I'm your friend now. I watched this video and this guy, I tell you, he's credible for all the reasons that you guys just said, he is credible. And he says that people have been contacting him from all over the world, all over the world with the same burn marks or, you know, like, several looking like that burn mark and they know that it has something to do with ufos because they have the burn mark and then something happens with the ufo hits them you know like beams them or whatever and this guy's telling everybody in the in the auditorium and they're taking him totally seriously so i think that this burn mark i showed you on my phone of that was on my body possibly ufo related because you know me i've had some ufo weird experiences okay that's what your friend has told you just what i just said right now okay so now how are you going to have a conversation with this person all you know is what i just told you right now you have not seen the video you don't know nothing about hair dryers okay you just know that this person thinks he's, and also remember that what your friend has told you doesn't mean it's exactly what was in the video because they're just repeating to you what they think they heard, that it's UFO related and thousands of people and all that nonsense. So now you're going to go to your little rooms, go to your little rooms, like good little people. And, and I'm going to give you a little bit longer. How are you having a conversation with this person at this point? That's your mission. Dun, 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 dun. Great. Uh, Adrian had a, a, an interesting observation. Go ahead, Adrian. Oh, you want me to say it? Okay. I missed that. Uh, yeah, just that one of the complaints that Susan says she gets sometimes is it's too fast. And the what, breakout rooms. In the breakout rooms that you don't have enough time to speak. And 
it's kind of a good practice though, because when you're faced with having a conversation with somebody, you don't have a chance to go and say, hold on for a second. I'm going to go talk to my friends about this and I'll get back to you in 10 minutes as to how I'm going to respond. You have to come up with something pretty quickly. So I think this is really good practice. That was just, mm -hmm. just my little observation. <laughs> okay. So who wants to start? <clears throat> You're all going to do it, do it succinctly and quickly, but tell me what it is that you, what were the words that you said to your friend? Linda? Well, you know, first of all, we thought this was really hard. This is, this hits you with something and you, and automatically you want to uh, kick into skeptic mode and say, where's your evidence for this? And, all that, but um, uh, we thought it was important to to listen to how this person thought this came to this conclusion, and also important to find out how they respond emotionally to this uh, the situation. Are they really distressed and fearful about this, or are they excited and and happy? Uh, to be involved in this, uh, you know, amazing phenomenon. And very good observations. Yeah, um, thrilled to be abducted, uh, potentially being abducted by aliens, or are they, are they scared? <laughs> yeah. Right, Doug, you got something? Yeah, Romero and I were talking about um, the importance of continuing to listen to watching the video ourselves. So we speak from a place of knowledge rather than just mm -hmm. assuming that we know what um, Jacques Vallée was talking about and um, trying to maintain, keep the conversation going rather than simply saying, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> so that was kind of what we discussed. Hold my beer, I'll show you yeah. something weirder. Yeah. <laughs> Faith, what do you got? Um, we also talked about like not using the language of what evidence do you have? Are you sure that this is what this is? Um, because I think that triggers in you the concept that the person you're talking to is is doubting you. And I've I really kind of you know pointed on how this person feels about this encounter is going to really kind of guide you on what types of questions you need to ask and what level of curiosity you do need to show um, with the information. Romero? Yeah, I think like Linda said, this was hard because I, I just jumped to uh, like, oh, I'm gonna watch the video and then I'll give you uh, what I think of my thoughts on it. And I was also thinking like, what are his qualifications? Who is this guy? Where did you find him? Uh, and but also, I guess, uh, ask, telling them that, um, like, why, what makes you think that even if, like, there's UFOs marking people, like, why would this be a UFO to kind of be curious about why, how they came to that conclusion? Exactly. Yeah, I'd like to build off a little bit what Faith was talking about. Um, because it seems to be emotional for this person, you can't just talk intellectually about it. You know, you just can't talk about evidence if it's something that's overwhelmingly emotional. Because no matter how thoughtful you might be, if you dismiss it because there's no evidence, then that person is not going to hear you because you're not speaking to their experience or to their emotions. You're simply speaking to facts and figures that have nothing to do with their subjective sense of what happened to them. Very good. You guys are on it. Okay. So you have had this little bit of conversation with this person who's now kind of giving you a little bit more information about how they watch this video. And um, you're absolutely right. The Romero and Doug that said, can I watch this video and come back to you with some information? And again, the person you're talking to, your friend is somebody that you're going to see on a regular basis. So hopefully you would be able to see them relatively soon, you know, within a, within a week or so and gives you some time to watch it. So you're, you're, if you want to continue this conversation with your friend, keeping in mind that sometimes you do have to walk away from some of these 
conversations. They may not be healthy conversations and you, or you don't think your friend is somebody that you want to continue having these conversations with in the future. Maybe they're, maybe you just are like, oh, I, no. <laughs> Let's talk about the weather, you know, okay. So you can cut and, and run kind of thing. It, it is possible. <laughs> and and we have had to do that probably with some people in our lives but if the person is still willing to engage you may say to them something like you know that looks really interesting can i watch that video and then can you send me a link and so that you can watch the video and and if they say oh yeah i mean think about what that would say if you say can i watch that video that says what what does it say i acknowledge your reality mm -hmm. Because you can't be making fun of this video that you haven't seen. I mean, what does that say? The person's going to be like, they don't even, I watched the video. I thought it was legit. I thought this guy was real. He was great. But you're not even going to watch the video? I mean, so, okay. Here's here's a screenshot of what you saw, uh, with the what your friend saw on the video. It's uh you know, this is this is a screenshot from the video, and it's talking about how in 2016 the witness noticed a mark on her hip, and it faded in about a week. And then in 2017, the witness saw um, this spacecraft floating above their car, and and so on. So, to the to your friend, they think this looks credible. To you guys, the first thing that jumps out at you is probably what. I need more information. Right. What else? Mm -hmm. quickly mm -hmm. try to read it. The fact that it faded in about a week. Because okay. again, we you don't know how I need to know how long a burn would last on your skin. Okay, well, what I'm trying to get at, and I'll help you here yeah. a little bit because I've done this a few times, is how do you get from 2016 to 2017 that that a burn on your body is related to a UFO scare? How do you how do you how do you go from one to the other? That's almost ten months. It's ten and months, the burn, and the burn appeared before the UFO encounter. But, but at this point, we don't even know that it's a burn. The mark appeared. The mark appeared ten months before you encountered said UFO. So how do you know they're related? Right. A good point. Mm -hmm. So if your if your friend is telling you gets to this part in the video and says, "Well, this this person had this mark on their body," and then ten months later, or a while later, or years later, or whatever they say. They have this, it, they'll probably go into great detail about what this encounter is, because that's the important part of the story, too. It's like, mm -hmm. there was this car and this woman and her kids were in the back and they took a picture and there was this sunlight, I mean, star, uh, what is it called? Skylight. And there was this object following them. And, you know, I mean, they'll go into great depth because humans are storytellers, right? We like to tell stories. And this is a story. And it probably makes them feel special. Hi, hi there, Adrian's husband's there. Hello. Um, we're talking what about UFOs. We're talking about UFOs. So uh, he probably thinks we're probably weirdos. Anyway, uh, <laughs> she's repeating it to him. She's got her head bent on. Hey, you know, I have a question. He's gonna go. He's gonna give a big thumbs up. Yes, I think you guys are weirdos. Um, the I have a question. Uh, did they sure. believe that that uh, like they get marked? And then years later, like like they get marked to be abducted later. Maybe uh, that's what they're thinking that they don't in know. the future they're going to be abducted. Or, yeah. I wouldn't even know. introduce that information. They don't. I, they don't know. Yeah. If you watch the full video, you'll find out that Jacques doesn't have an answer. He just says that um, a lot of people turn in these marks in photos to him on his website, and some of them have had UFO encounters afterwards and that's what he's curious about because he's equating the mark with the ufo when there's no relation 
And I think you have to be really careful with that to talk about how they're, these two incidences aren't related, but not talking about the na nature of the incidences themselves. So well, it, you can yeah. see why they would come to that uh, conclusion because, it, you know, two mysteries, are they connected some way? Yeah. Right. So keep that in mind to your friend. This is where their mind is going because they've had this mark. They've showed you a picture of it on their phone. And maybe now they want to tell you a story about something that they thought was UFO related. Maybe they or shadow people or whatever. I don't know. But it, you're right. So so think about it from their viewpoint. To them, this is, they see the correlation. Whereas us as skeptics, we're probably like, I'm not quite sure how you got from point A to point B and why you think they're related. But in their mind, they can. So I don't know. Anyway, so we're going to move on with our little, our little uh, scenario here. Your friend has given you the video link, right? And you have looked at the video and you've, you've looked at it and you said, oh, this is okay. So now um, the next day, maybe you've said, it's a coworker and you said, hey, you got, hey, you know, at lunch, can we have lunch together? Or can we grab a coffee? Because I watched that video and I want to talk to you about it, right? So, so you're starting to have a little bit more of, um, of a conversation with them. <clears throat> Let me look at my slide to make sure where I'm at on my slide. So here's where you're going to have a conversation with them. And I'm going to show you some slides. So this is getting where you watch the video now. And this is something that appears on the video that there's a whole series of these marks on a person. They're all different kinds. You know, some of them are partly formed, some are perfectly cylindrical, and the, they disappear after a couple of weeks. There doesn't seem to be any health effects. I mean, you don't really need to go see a doctor. It's not, not bleeding or anything like that. It's mostly, but not always women. And it is, it is interesting how this is a phenomenon worldwide. Okay. So that's where we're at right now. Okay, I'm not going to go as far as I thought. So I'm going to put you back in your room real quick. Let's talk about that really fast. About um, exchange. Okay, so uh, I want you to, to have that little bit of conversation that you've watched the video now. And all you've done is watch the video. You didn't Google the guy's name or anything like that. So now continue that conversation with them about how... Um, this is a worldwide effect, mostly women and so on. Go. Hey. Can I keep going? You two don't fight. I'm talking to my cats. They're, they get weird, weird about it. And they want to be in the same chair at the same time. <laughs> I don't know. This pandemic has made life with cats so weird. You just feels like you know every little moment about their little lives, and they fall. It's our our lives have become intertwined with our pets. Yeah, yeah. It's it's so interesting. Adrian had an a, a interesting um, thought it, she wanted to share based on what Doug had said a minute ago. Go ahead. Adrian. Yeah, yeah. Doug had talked about how if they're really emotional, they might not be able to hear you they don't want to hear the facts etc and that reminded me i did an interview with jonathan jerry yesterday so i had a bunch of stuff prepared and he had a quote from psycon 2019 which i think encapsulated what doug was saying really well and it says if facts don't care about your feelings feelings don't care about your facts and i think it's a really good <laughs> way to to think of this because if they're emotional it's going to be really hard to to involve facts mm -hmm. So. Well, just your, your brain structure and your brain chemistry won't let you. I mean, it's it's not as if I choose to ignore facts. It's just I'm going deeper into my lizard brain yeah. and I don't hear facts. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So the facts can wait. Yes. <laughs> All right. So any insight? Who wants to go? 
Well, Linda was talking about something interesting just when we got pulled out of our room. So I'll let her of course, please, of course. please finish what your thought was. Oh, oh I, I was going to mention that Vali uh, said that one of a doctor had done a biopsy on one of these marks. And that's where I knew this is really weird because <laughs> no doctor would biopsy one of those marks. Oh yeah, that's true. These are burn marks. They're not like scabbed. Well, they're they're so superficial, and there's no there's no tissue to take. Yeah, there's no rationale for doing a biopsy. I mean, this is not a growth or anything. And and um, and he said that it was also uh, beneath the skin. Uh, now, that is, uh, what does that you mean? can have like, you can have like ta ta uh, tattoos that, that are made underneath the skin. And uh, that's called a, a blowout, I think, because whatever you put into the subcutaneous fat, you're going to get it just spreading out. You're not going to get this nice, clear line. I don't know. It looked, I mean, it, it appears to be very superficial, especially if it fades. So, you know, that medically just didn't. I had, I had picked up, nobody's picked up on that before. It makes a good, good one, Linda. It also makes me think anybody in America knows darn well that nobody's going to be able to get an appointment within two weeks to go see a doctor who's going to have the <laughs> remaining on their body, right? I say, mm -hmm. I got this weird looking mark on my body. I better get an appointment. The burns, the mark is gone by the time you got your appointment, right? I mean, even no, <laughs> unless you just so happen to get the mark at a time that you have an appointment and you go in and go, what doctor do you think this is? And they say, it's a flipping hair dryer. No, looks just like the mark I got from my hair dryer. Anyway, other insights. But, but looking at their... Uh... The different designs, I you know, you could well believe that somebody might think of that as a special language or code or uh, like marking cattle. You know, this one's been Thanks. vaccinated already. You know, you're being branded by the aliens. Branded for taking. Yeah. They're 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 just like, it's like maybe they're going to eat us, and they're saying you're at a certain point in your. Out of service. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. I mean, it's it gets kind of surreal when you start thinking about this, but think about how much people have invested in this. And the more they're invested in it, the less likely they're going to like your solution, which is a hairdryer. They're really going to be pissed off when it, when you finally come up with the idea that it's a hairdryer. Okay. But who's going to think of it as a hairdryer when people have marks on their hip? How did these people get these marks in some of these places? I don't, don't really want to know. But yeah, I, I, what are you drawing? <laughs> but no, you can you can just do. I've I've actually done it before, blow drying my own hair, where if you put it like you pull it down and the tip of it actually like grazes, you can have a little burn mark. Like curling irons will do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and curling irons is a good way of explaining it because I think a lot of us have had well females have had curling iron burns really close to the ear or the up here or even the neck area and how yeah, quickly the it's really tender in there so so this mention here he says that it's mostly women is kind of a clue to what's going to come up now i don't know if you would have gotten to that point with your friend because you've watched the video but you might say you know it is odd that it is almost all women i ramiro actually mentioned that and i said be careful when you of entering that statement into the conversation because that can invoke a feeling of you're telling me I'm hysterical oh, if you're talking right, yeah. to a woman That's so true. It, it, it's trying to remember that there are avenues that a person if a person is from a marginalized group to kind of stay away from language that may make it seem like you're trying to marginalize them and oh it's mostly happening to women well women are hysterical so you're telling me i'm crazy like that's a think good point. that they may jump that through that point. but romero knows the answer he knows it's here <laughs> yeah <laughs> he's, 
He's going, but just be careful when you're introducing that statement. Like you may have to be further down, you may have to be further up climbing out of the rabbit hole. <laughs> you don't want to be at a point where where you look like you're making fun of the uh, the the woman. That, of course, we should. You don't want to. You don't want to take two steps for take one step forward and two steps back. Like, well, unless you're saying why why are the uh, extraterrestrials interested? Yeah, why are they just targeting women? This is well this for breeding right. purposes, of course. <laughs> they went your eggs or something, right? Don't they? But I didn't see anything in the video about that where they had stuff to say that it could be that. How far did you get into the video? Oh, I didn't get into the video, <laughs> but that's what I would tell the person like after watching it. I got 20 minutes in and that was as far as I could go. <laughs> Anybody get further than 20 minutes? I think 25 oh, minutes. Yeah, I did, yeah. 20, oh yeah, it's I it's did. quite interesting. I, I didn't get very far. Mark's here. Hi. Okay, so now. I'm now. Hi. I'll come and say hello. Hi, everybody. Hello. Hey. Hi, Mark. Hello, Mark. Hi, Hi Mark. Mark. Yeah, Adrian's going to do these in the future, probably up in Canada. So this is her second time doing it. So she's she's getting behind the scenes information. Good. She's hearing about what's okay okay kitty move. kitty move kitties are here all right so now you have watched the video right and then one more thing you went and tried to look for something to explain it so you found mick west's article on hair dryers and and so on so here's your screenshots that you found Okay, so this is one of the things that's on Mick West's Metabunk site because Mick West, what is, um, who is uh, an explainer of of science odd oddities, debunker, you might say, he has a website called Metabunk, and it's a forum, and they discuss odd things. So the people, it's like a crowd crowdsource thing. So here's one of the things they came up with is that the front of a hairdryer can give you a burn when it's hot enough. And a lot of women, especially with curling irons, would know that this happens. We've all been there. We've done this. I don't know if I've ever gotten a burn from a hairdryer, but I know I've gotten curling iron burns and it's fast. It hits. And then the burn doesn't always show until, of course, you're going to go out someplace and you want to look good. And then the burn starts to show. So it's not like an instant, here comes the burn. It's usually a little bit later. And then... Here's another example of how the burns look on the skin. And here's the front of the of the hairdryer. So he's kind of looked at this kind of stuff and, and they've come up with this idea. Because Jacques, in his, um, in his wisdom, says it is some people do equate hairdryers to the burns, but they don't match all the hairdryers. They're not all the... Um, it doesn't match yeah, all the hair patterns. Dryers. Same patterns. Yeah. So there's some some places, but then we're talking a worldwide effect. So these are people from all over the world who have all different kinds of hair dryers. And so it could be a lot of different things. But when Jacques says that a person has given him the um a photo and it does match a hair dryer burn, you know, the front of a hair dryer grill. Then he removes their photo from his website. He says he's removing him from the website because he wants to keep the person. He and he doesn't say anything about it. He just removes it because what he wants to keep on his website are only the the burn marks that have nothing to do with that don't match hair dryers. Okay, <laughs> to keep the keep it open. Adrian had a another insight. Can you say what you said? Christy said. Oh yeah, last one. Christy, who's a lot younger than. I am at least. Uh, she she pointed out that modern day hair dryers often don't have that thing close to the edge. And if you look at it like a Dyson hair dryer, which is quite expensive, but it doesn't. It's just an open circle, so you're not going to get those type of burns, the the sort of UFO style burns. And as a young person, she would have thought, "Well, that's weird," and she wouldn't would definitely not have jumped to a hair dryer. And so I think it's something to keep in mind for the generation of the people you're talking to as well. So they may mm -hmm. not, this might not be a phenomenon in 10 years, whenever hair dryers mm -hmm. 
burns away. Linda? Another point is that uh, people tend not to remember when they inflicted a minor injury on themselves. You know, like you'll see a bruise and you'll wonder, what did I do to get that? So uh, burning yourself with a hairdryer might be, uh, you know, an ouch at that moment, but uh, you just go on, you're thinking of something else and you don't remember how you got that. Absolutely. It could be it could be days before you realize or you see that mark. Even if it just show up, it's under your clothing, you don't notice. I mean I sometimes I cut myself and I don't I don't know how I cut myself. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, you get bruises, you find them on your well, I have the bruise thing happen all the time. Yeah, and, and also some people under certain kinds of medication, they may bruise easier than they normally bruise or there's all kinds of things so okay so let's go to your going back to the workshop your friend has gone uh has has said to you and another thing we're talking about is if, if your friend's like oh and i have another video and i have another video and i have another video and so on and they want to keep going with uh more and more things for you to explain i think it's i think it's legit for you to be able since you've watched their video for you to be able to say i watched your video now you need to look at this for me before we can continue the conversation, because you, you know, you don't want to be in this, you don't want to fall into the rabbit hole with them and spending your life trying to explain these things to them. They, they move the goalposts. They're like, Oh, you explained that. Okay. Let's go now explain this. Okay. Now explain that. It's like, okay, you've, you've done this. I've watched your video here. Here's an article by Mick West. I think it's, I think it's fair that you should at least read this yourself, but Again, you have to judge when you're talking about your friend, how, what is going to work? Because if you just throw, oh, I watched your video, boom, I've just trumped you with this card, this, this uh, debunking thing by Mick West. I'm done here. No, you want to have a, still have a conversation with them. You think you've figured out the answer. It's what Mick West talks about with the hair dryers. He's done experiments. Did anybody, did you guys read the article by Mick West? Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. Okay. A little bit. A little bit. Okay. So, in the scenario that I'm giving you, you have had a, you have read this article by Mick West, and you've looked at the MetaBunk site, and you've looked at some of the things they've done. So now you need to go back to your friend and tell them, I found this article by this guy named Mick West, and it's published in Skeptical Inquirer. Obviously, already they're ha they're they're going, oh, Skeptical Inquirer, Mick West, eh, you know. So I found this article and I think it, I think it, I think it explains what might be going on. So you have to decide how much information you want to give this friend of yours. Do you want to give him the article by Mick West or do you want to just kind of allude to you found some other things on the internet that kind of, it seems like it's hairdryer related. How much information you give them depends on your relationship with that person and how much you think they're receptive to it right i think that some skeptics will go in and say here you go here's the answer not knowing knowing fully well that the person's never going to look at that video and you see this on facebook all the time they're like somebody's making an argument and they're like here's a link here's another link here's another link it, and and they're going and the person's going i'm not looking at your links you know they're not going to look at it there there's no way so you have to find a way of interjecting enough um how do i want to say this interjecting just enough to get them so that they'll look at the video or look at the um the link that you're about to give them with the ufo thing or you're not going to give it to them at all you want them to save face you want them to feel like they figured it out so now you're going to go into your breakout rooms that mix you up again and I want you to have this conversation again, this time um, with, um, with you have read this article about Mick West, but you don't know how much information to give them, depending on your relationship with them, and have a little bit more conversation, okay? Same kind of thing. I'm going to give you a little bit more time in this because it's a little more involved.
Okay, so we're getting to a little bit. I allowed uh, Adrian to go in and listen to your conversations a little bit more. Well, I I kind of got involved too, you know. Yeah. I <laughs> <laughs> so well, they, uh, it was so interesting. That. <laughs> I know it is. It really is interesting. So, well, because you know, what they were saying was totally different than anything we came up with. And I was like, oh, this is so fun. Well, this is what I'm doing these workshops. I, every time I hear something different and it's so interesting. I mean, like what Linda said about the biopsy and stuff. I've never had anybody mention that before, but that's absolutely right. That is, that's, I don't know if you could hit the person over the head with it and say, hey, this guy's not legit because I mean, biopsies, really? You know? Yeah, well, no, but. But you've you've got to understand there's a cadre of people who are doctors and who are interested in the phenomena. So there may be right. real doctors who hear about that and will do a biopsy simply because they want to prove their beliefs. That's true. But, but if you but if you learn about that, then you on your own, you're going to want to find the case study for that. Oh, of course. Yeah. So it just depends on your friend because your friend might be a person who's medically minded like Linda and they will, Linda will, might be able to say, okay, you know, doc, well, that no legit doctor is going to go and do a biopsy and, and talk about this stuff. So maybe Linda would be able to relate to that person from the angle, whereas somebody who's not in the medical field would, would not notice the nuance of it. And they would say, but maybe the doctor did do a biopsy, but you know, it just, so it depends. The conversation depends. There's no right answer. There's, it's all just out there. So I'm really curious on what you guys found to say to the friend of yours, to allow them to save face. I'm very curious about what you said. Who wants to start? I'm going to eat a milk dud for you. So somebody <laughs> has to talk because I can't. Faith, I see your little thing activated. Okay. Well, we we talked about keeping the language of we, like making this a kind of a joint investigative venture. So when we give them this information and then ask them, like, do you have a blow dryer? Could we look at that to see if there's, you know, possibility that this that this mark may look <laughs> similar to this or even making a field trip out of it? Like Let's go to your bathroom. No, I was even saying like <laughs> if you don't have a blow dryer. Why don't we meet up for coffee at the local Target or the local Starbucks inside the Target and go look at the hair dryers? And let's go look together to see if any of these blow dryers that anybody can go get maybe match some of the stuff that we're seeing. And I even mentioned like the fact that you said that he pulls things from his website, like comparing some of the stuff that's on his actual website to what Mick West has on his and what you know, Jacques has on his and us turning it into a little field trip together where we're, we are going through this skeptical practice together. Oh, I like that. Overtly, not, not making them aware that that's kind of what we're doing, but giving them that skill and then making it where, you know, we've come up with the conclusion of something and we go off and we go do something that's completely, totally unrelated to this issue so that they don't feel threatened. They don't feel like our relationship is going to deteriorate if suddenly we find out that this is blow dryers and I'm going to look like an idiot because I may have accidentally burned myself and I think I had an alien encounter and this person's going to think I'm crazy. Like, no, we're going to go see a movie. Let's go see a movie. Yeah. <laughs> I think I like the idea of a field trip to somebody's bathroom. That sounds mm -hmm. like well, but, but the, <laughs> the point has to be you can't show them the Mick West video until much further along because that's an appeal to authority and you're immediately saying i don't believe you mick west proves that you're wrong therefore there's something wrong with you your um, faith is right we've got to maintain that we relationship so that you can be a part of the process with them as soon as you bring somebody like mick west in then you're immediately dismissing their experience and their emotions very good. Romero and uh, Linda? Okay, go Beat, ahead, the Beat the target field oh. trip. <laughs> Romero? Uh, sure, I, 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 I can go. Yeah, I think, uh, well, Linda mentioned that uh, we might want to continue to appeal and or notice their emotional state, you know, and then the pending 
what they are, like what state they're in, then that could determine what our answer would be. Like for example, if we're like really afraid of being abducted by aliens, then we're like, no, we want to help you feel better. You know, you you'll be uh like this won't happen two years from now. And so uh, you know, like bring up the the hair dryer. But if they're like uh you know, just having a lot of fun with it. We might just like mention uh, some some people think it might be a hair dryer. You know, like let it go, not not push it too much. Very good. You guys are right on it. Okay, so you got the right idea. It's going to depend on the situation with your friend. It depends on. I mean, if they're way in a rabbit hole somewhere and they're I mean, really into it, you may have a completely different experience where you probably shouldn't even have this conversation with them because they're already so, so in it, but hopefully they're at a point where they're still hoping that you'll explain it. Like you said, if, if they really believe they're going about to be abducted, that this mark means they're going to be abducted, maybe they're terrified or maybe they're really excited about that. They want to have alien babies. I don't know, but <laughs> or be eaten by aliens. I'm going to see a spaceship. This is great. So exactly. You change your, you I keep seeing something moving out of the corner of my eye and it's like <laughs> that right there. I'm like, like, That's um, right. <laughs> it depends on your, on your relationship with the person and it depends on how far they're into it or, or whatever. But the goal of the whole conversation you're having with them is so that you can have this conversation with them in a in a trusting way, kind, allowing them to save face, allowing them to kind of come along in the journey with you so that when they have conversations about something, when they have a question about something, it's a lot more dangerous than a, than a, a mark they found on their body. They're going to feel comfortable coming to you and having that conversation that may be something like not going through with their treatment that their their medical treatment that they were told to do by their doctor or whatever. This is the whole idea is not to hit them over the head with just boom, boom, boom. Here's the answer, you idiot. Okay. So this comes back to something the CFI and and uh when I first put this this workshop together, it was with with in conjunction with CFI. I've been working with uh Eric Schaefer at CFI about how we can get groups back together again and have these conversations. And my my idea was, I think during this pandemic, we really haven't had great interactions with people anymore. We've almost started to forget about how to have a friendly conversation with somebody because we've been kind of isolating ourselves from people so much. And I think that it's a good reminder of how to, to have, you know, not throwing logical fallacies at people and saying you're wrong because of this. And that was a, you know, stupid blunder you made or whatever. But um, Nick Tiller, um, who uh, was at Psycon this last year, he, and other people have been talking a lot about debunking versus um, pre-bunking. And I know that I have, and a lot of others and uh, probably in this room, have been doing this for years, how to teach people how to think about things. And I called it inoculation theory, and I think other people have too. Linda's probably run into this a bunch. But if you if you give them a dose of some kind of, um, you if you give them a little bit of information ahead of time, then they may be starting to do this themselves. That they they, you know, you'll they'll come to you and they'll say, "I found this mark on my body. It looks like a burn," and then you'll say, "Well, that's really odd." Uh, what do you think? It, and then they start to debunk it themselves because you've given them enough information. Mm -hmm. I like the idea of um, your friend has been approached by a, um, you've, you've given a, you've talked to your friend about a multi-level marketing scam, right? How it's pyramid up. The person, the person at the top is the one that's getting all the money and all the people down at the body at the bottom are going to lose their money and that the people at the bottom are putting money into it. And that's the people at the top are getting it. So the only people who get rich are the first two or three investors in it. <coughs> You've explained the idea of what a pyramid scam is. Your friends watched a video on it. You guys have had a good discussion on it. They understand it so that later when they have their friend approach them and saying, hey, I got this really good investment. 
this is this is really great. You'll make a ton of money. You know, you'll make 300% a profit on your money in a short amount of time. They're already thinking in their mind, this sounds like that pyramid scam thing. I I think I think this might be that. You know, it might not fit every every um every bit of it, but they're they've been inoculated against it. Does that make sense to you guys? This idea that they have a little bit of information that makes them think that reminds me of this other thing I've seen. Mm -hmm. So this is what this, what I'm trying to do is trying to talk to us to remind us that we all know this stuff is that if you give them a little information, they hopefully will go farther with it. What is that old uh, maxim? They say, give a person a, um, a fish, then they eat the day. If you teach them how to fish, then they're more likely to, to feed themselves for a longer period of time because they've got enough information. So pre-bunking versus debunking. I want to talk about that really quickly because we're doing really well on time. So pre-bunking um, and debunking. So who wants to give me an example of what or a definition of debunking is? Mm. Linda does. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, my favorite debunking was uh, uh, in the 1990s, uh, the studies done on facilitated communication. I, the, uh, the little the experiments they did, uh, I thought just nail the last nail on the coffin of that pseudoscience. It and have gone been then. Yeah. <laughs> Go around. And it revived, but that was beautiful debunking. Mm -hmm. Okay. So give me somebody give me an example of pre bunking. Or define it. Well, this may be when you uh, think in the video, they say uh, it's kind of like inoculating people for before. Um, so you, you give an example of like, this is uh, how magic is done. And then, uh, you know, later on when, or, or, uh, or like telling, I think in the video, say like telling people that, uh, there's going to be misinformation about the vaccines. They're going to cl be claiming that uh, vaccines are uh, harmful so that when people start hearing that information, they're aware that that's what was coming. Exactly. Okay. Debunking and pre-bunking or inoculation theory, whatever you want to call it, is it still valuable to have debunking because if you handed your friend that you're talking, they if they had a burn or a mark on them and you said, I know exactly what that is. Here is an article by Mick West debunking the burn. If you had handed it to them on the first time, as soon as it caught out of their mouth, I know what that is. Here, boom, here's this article by Mick West. Read this. What? What, what do you think it would feel like to be that human being who now has had this card, through, you know, this, this article thrown at him? Somebody give me an answer. Disrespected. Disrespected. You feel stupid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're getting an answer. So why would they feel disrespected? Because you're not... Ex the answer that they're looking for is at least as much emotional as it is factual. And if you bring in a, an authority, we all know by now that authorities can't be trusted. Therefore, whatever authority you bring in isn't speaking to my experience. They're simply stating their position. Okay. So what value does debunking have in our society right now? <laughs> My own personal opinion is it just drives us further into our corners. Mm. Mm. I mean, if you if you look at Mick West, mm -hmm. all of his explanations, when you look at UFO believers, his explanations are de debunked. So it's not so much that any UFO believer is convinced by his arguments as much as they spend a great deal of time showing why his arguments aren't valid. Very good. 
and look at facilitated communication, which is <laughs> that well, but zombie so, has risen I from mean, the if dead. You handed them a video saying this is ridiculous and here's why. How are they going to feel? But facilitated communication meets an emotional need of a parent. Mm -hmm. And so you can't simply say, well, factually, it doesn't work because that's the only thing that particular parent has to cling to as far parent. as. Yeah. Yeah. So you're speaking about, you know, well, here's an intellectual reason why it doesn't work. And here's an emotional reason why it does. The emotion is going to um, win at nine times out of ten. Very and good. it's and even if you don't have an emotional connection to it, like there's been a couple of things I've seen on facilitated communication. I think you may have posted one, Susan, where they had a letter board and the kid was poking a pencil through the oh, letters. I just did that yesterday. Yeah, I, I had a really difficult time even looking at that video, trying to understand exactly what I was seeing. Mm -hmm. And it's, I think, sometimes debunking of huge things like huge frauds when you talk about like Bernie Madoff or Elizabeth um, Holmes, like really trying to talk about how these big, huge things can happen and the wool can be pulled over even the smartest person's eyes. Mm -hmm. And this is why we're so like talking about that emotional response, why we're so susceptible to, to being fooled huge, like why Lulu Rowe did what it did. And I think if you give people that toolbox to work through the emotion because that's really what skepticism is it's working through the emotional response to what it is you're learning and if you kind of you know like the thing with the hair make it fun make it a game make it so that it's not threatening it's not you're not a bad person because you fell for the blow dryer like there's a perfectly rational reason that you fell for this it's just learning to step through those emotions so that you can check the lizard brain because Elizabeth Braid wants to win. We adapted that way. So what do you so what is the value of having of being a debunker or or reading debunking or what is that where where are we at now that we've had this interesting discussion about you guys are saying that nobody who believes in something should be handed a debunking because you got to pre-bunk them first. You got to you've got to it's like the inoculation you've got to give the skeptical immune system those little alarm bells that goes off that this looks funny this doesn't look right why doesn't it look right and then knowing how to navigate that because when you just come in and don't tell the person well this is why this doesn't work but you don't address you don't address the physiological or psychological reason you're just telling me factually why this is a blow dryer. You're not helping me work through why I wanted to believe it was aliens in the first place. I wouldn't be abducted. I wouldn't have alien babies. <laughs> but the, the other thing that I think is wrong with debunking is it's never a conversation. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing with um, true believers. It's never, ever a conversation. It's here's my position. Here's my other position. Here's the opposite position. We never really examine what our disagreements are. We simply state our disagreements and then assume the other person is bad and stupid for not understanding why my position is right and your position is wrong. It's that lack of conversation. Uh, I think Faith is very right about you know that we-ness, that the exploring it together is important to the process of understanding what's true rather than simply making a statement like with Nick West, um, you know, I've got a blow dryer here. It has this pattern. Therefore, all other patterns are blow dryers. Doesn't speak to the emotions of people who their pattern is different than their blow dryer pattern. Mm -hmm. So it's the lack of conversation rather than the position itself. And acknowledging, like, because I work with a pediatrician who refused to get the COVID vaccine. And we talked about that and I brought up to him, you know, like it's his, it's within his right not to do that because he doesn't feel it's safe. But don't you feel that as a doctor, maybe we need to be making sure that people are making good decisions because you know you worked with babies that got pertussis and whooping cough. 
you remember how dangerous it was when people didn't get vaccinated and kids are getting measles and mumps. And it didn't occur to him that maybe some of, because we were talking about trying to make sure some of this information you're being told is correct before you share it with other people, because you, you may say something to somebody and not intend it. And then a mother chooses not to vaccinate her baby and that baby ends up getting really sick and you treated kids that were that way. So, Mm -hmm. and I spent like a really long time just trying to help him understand like maybe you should do a bit more research before we start telling people some of these things because of the dangerous outcome we could end up doing. Like, and I bet we, like, and I even mentioned that I was being mm-hmm. careful with what I was looking because I was scared to get the vaccine because um, it seemed to me, oh yeah, we're, we're whipping something out when we know clinical trials and under the Trump administration. Too. Under under the Trump yeah. administration. Well, he he's pro-Trump. So that was not something I brought up because yeah. it didn't matter. But it was this, what is the outcome if we spread mis if we spread information that's misinformation? <laughs> we can hold the people accountable that are telling us, you know, we shouldn't get the vaccine. But we could hurt somebody we don't want to hurt. Absolutely. And Absolutely. I saw the wheels in his head goes, you know, I never thought of it that way before. And I was like, yay, maybe you'll actually get vaccinated or oh <laughs> make a make a better decision later on and not spread because he's he's and slightly on that have, QAnon. You will have better conversations with him because you had a respect. Well, and he and he respects me. He tells me all the time that I'm very smart, that he respects me, he's very glad to have me to bounce questions him, what, of, a, what kind of idiot are you? That, no, and he I mean, he, he never went there. <laughs> and I I don't think he'll ever <laughs> see this, but he's he is very much pro-Trump, very much QAnon, once ivermectin. And so it's, and he has a medical degree. Like yeah, he's that's scary. And it's, but it, if that can happen to him, it can happen to anybody. Right. And I think that if we're, if we are coming from this, approaching this whole discussion from the viewpoint that they have different information, they have different reasons for why they feel this, 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 um, why do they want to believe this? They have a whole different area. So I want to go back to the pre-bunking and the debunking, because I really think the debunking is 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 important. I think it's extremely important, but it has its place, right? I feel like because what we're missing is there's a middle, and you've got somebody who's who who um is really still questioning, and there's they're not there yet throwing a debunking article at him like Mick West's article or like the Kenny Biddle's ghost hunting videos. And I love the Kenny Biddle stuff, but you just can't just say, I think there's shadow people. And then he throws a video at him and says, there's no shadow people. What's wrong with you? That's a debunking too fast. There's a middle ground in there that needs to be done. And think, I want you to see if you can think about why we would have a reason under what scenarios would somebody want to have a debunking video debunking article why when would you use it well i have a real problem with the term debunking i mean if you're talking about true facts uh mick west talks about hair dryer patterns those are facts that's not debunking anything it's simply a, a dressing certain facts that people might might not know but the idea that it's debunking this experience so all experiences need to be thrown out is not valuable but showing that many of these patterns are identical to hair dryers is so the term debunking implies disposing of a whole field of interest and inquiry, I think is wrong to simply say, well, I've come up with this research and I've identified that two dozen of these patterns are identical to what you would get with a hairdryer. So you have to wonder if some of these other patterns would be hairdryers as well, because they're from all over the earth. We don't know what kind of hairdryer nozzles there are. To approach it that way rather than say it proves that it's all hair dryers, I think, is debunking. 
to say it's interesting facts that tend to suggest it might not be all aliens, I think is a better way of approaching it. Okay. So again, good point, Scott. Mm -hmm. What but when would you use an article like uh uh Mick West or something that Kenny Biddle has done showing how a phone could easily have been thrown across a room and it wasn't a poltergeist, but somebody could have done it and taken a bit, you know, they show how it could be done or probably was done or whatever. When would you use something like this? I mean, I, like I, I think for me, the debunking stuff was very helpful to, to think about it. Cause I believe in like aliens and all that stuff. And then I started watching like debunking videos and it was very interesting. And but I guess it's because nobody like send me a link like, hey, here's a link. You found it, <laughs> it on was, your own. I just you yeah, had I found no it page. on my own. And I think and like then, oh, sorry. And then also um like I was uh thinking that you know sometimes some claim comes around and I'm like, I have no idea what could be going on here. And I would like, you know, some resource that I can go and and read and maybe like somebody that some something or research something and I don't have the time to go and research it myself. Uh, yeah. Faith, you were going to say? Yeah, I think it's going to depend on like your emotional relationship with the person you're talking with and how how far your relationship i think peter bogosian had written a whole book about how to have impossible conversations and so like on this type of spectrum you have to know where you are like with the person you're talking with and build up that relationship to where i'm this way now when i have something that triggers my skeptical spidey senses i feel comfortable enough like going to romero and saying hey have you heard of this do you know of any places I could search for some information that will give me a, this is likely not true, or yes, you have something you need to worry about. Um, and sometimes I'll even seek it out myself. Like when there was an article that came out a couple of months ago about all the plankton dying off in the ocean. Hmm. I don't know if you remember hearing about that, but I had a moment where I had a point of like, like dread come over me and got really upset and emotional about it and it made me feel better a couple of days later it's when a woman. well it, well it's zombie it's apocalypse hysterical. pandemic all this stuff you know waiting for the world to end and then there was this article that was published you know on on the news and i needed somebody to come in and debunk it but if if you're not comfortable if the person is not comfortable asking somebody that sees you as a position of like, I wouldn't say authority, but just that you, you have resources, you're a trustworthy source. I know if I come to you and I say that, oh, I saw this thing about burns. I had one on me. I'm really scared that this might be aliens from what I'm seeing. Do you know where I can go to filter through the cesspool of Google results? I was like, yeah, I came across an article from Mick West. Here you go. You know, this is, you know, or same thing, like if it's an alien encounter, oh, Kenny Biddle probably got something on that. He can probably explain to you why it might not be what you think it is. I mean, that's what Houdini did. You don't see people doing seances anymore. Well, sure because, <laughs> well I mean, you don't see them as prevalent now. Oh, no, they're not as prevalent, but yeah. Yeah. But you had to, you had to be delicate in that type of situation because of the, it's, it's all, I hate emotion. I hate it. <laughs> it gets in the way. Well, I think I think that these articles can be very beneficial to uh, believe it or not as an and I think Romero was starting to talk about this is as a pre bunking as as uh, if you're not if you don't know anything about burn marks and, and hair dryers, if you don't know anything about it, and you find one of these articles and you go, oh, this looks interesting. And you read it. You don't have any emotion attached to it. There's there's it's just. It's just a really weird looking article that you 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 pick up hair dryers and UFOs what, and you feel like this. Um, oh, I'm going to read this. And so what you've done is you're you you as because there's no emotion, you're pre bunking. You're you're uh, you're you're inoculating yourself against this 
this um, bit of inform misinformation that if it, it ever crosses your plate or your friend's plate, you've you've given yourself this little bit of information and you've decided you've maybe found Mick West for the first time or Kenny Biddle or Ben Radford or whomever, and you say, oh. Ah, okay, I get this. I mean, most of us will never run into facilitated communication, but because we know Janice Boynton and I could, and and we know um, Linda Rose's work, we feel like we have a little bit more information. You might never ever have anything to do with this holding therapy or anything like that, but because I'm constantly sharing it on Facebook or or you're finding it in other places, when you do, you will have enough information to go, aha. I've heard of this pyramid scam, you know, I think I know what that is. And the other reason, and again, Romero said this as well, when you're starting to get to a point where you want to question it, when you are interested in the topic and you into privacy of your home or you're, you know, somebody didn't throw it at you, you say, all right, I want to know what's going on with this flat earth thing. Let me find out. Let me look at the people who are critical of flat earth theory and you do the research. So you're saving face. You need to find articles like this Mick West article that's showing you the science of it. Just like Doug said, here's the facts. Here's, here's, I did this test. Here's the result. Here's, here's the, here's the thermo, the, the, the temperature of the object. Here it is. I burned this piece of, uh, I don't know, whatever. And here's the results. You know, when you're ready for it and you're looking for an answer, I think the pre-bunking, I mean, the debunking articles are important to have out there. But well, there, mm -hmm, go ahead, Linda. Well, there are, the pre-bunking is really important uh, because in some areas, it's unethical to do the, the debunking. That's true. Uh, uh, in um, in medicine, particularly, it's unethical to spend resources, which includes not only money but also also using human subjects, um, to test uh, a hypothesis that is highly implausible. That that you just don't do that sort of thing, but it does happen. Very good insight. I hadn't thought of that either, but you're absolutely right. So in some circumstances, you can't go in and, like you said, test a subject to see if there's nobody out there with lined up with a bunch of babies and they're like hair dryer burning in them, you know, <laughs> let's see if this, let's see what the pattern looks like on this human body. Right, yeah. No, there, that can't happen. At least it shouldn't be happening. Maybe North Korea. Oh, maybe. <laughs> oh, oh, it's meeting. Uh, You're being recorded. <laughs> I'm being recorded. The North Koreans are coming after me right now. It's, in, it's not allowed in Poyang anymore. Okay, so we're, we're really running out of time. I let you guys go a little bit longer and I probably do in most workshops because I thought the conversation was interesting and we're we're doing really well. Um, just uh, I'd like to have from um, each of you guys, if you had any aha moments, because of course these workshops are um, uh, something I'm doing and uh, Adrian's probably going to probably do these as well. Here's the article by Mick West. If you haven't read it, probably check it out and, and see and read it over because I think it's very interesting his mm -hmm. method and his other work as well as some of the other work of people we've mentioned but um, I'd like to know if there's any aha moments you had just very quickly a minute each or so who wants to start about the idea of this workshop and whatever don't rush me now <laughs> Doug's first <laughs> no, thanks a lot no, I was um, I am <laughs> I was just fascinated by the conversation and realizing how important it is to maintain a personal connection rather than simply throwing data at a, at a person. Doug, did you, did you come to this workshop? Did you learn about it from, um, from, were you at uh, Kenny Biddle, my talk I gave with Kenny Biddle? No, I, <clears throat> I got an email from the Colorado Skeptics. Ah, and I, I need to come clean now that it's at the end. I'm a skeptic about skeptics, or at least skeptical inquirers. Um, I've, I've, I'm fascinated by both sides of these arguments. So I'm, I want to stay involved in these conversations. Well, um, but that's my position. So we're all, uh, most of us have been exactly in your spot, Doug. We're well, all... um, 
believers of some sort. No, no, I'm not so much a believer. I don't believe one way or the other. I'm just fascinated by how each side argues their position. Um, there was an, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't want to waste too much time. Go ahead. Well, I want to hear if you want to finish that sentence. Skeptical Inquirer had an article probably 10 years ago mm -hmm. about the authorship, authorship question about whether Shakespeare really wrote Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. And the article said basically, what are you talking about? Of course he wrote Shakespeare. There's no possibility it wasn't Shakespeare. And just reading the article made me realize that people come to their beliefs from a lot of different ways. But once they get there, boy, it's like frying their cold dead fingers off their guns to get them to change their mind. And so I'm more interested, more interested in the process of thinking through how we argue about our beliefs rather than having a belief or not. Probably not arguing would help. <laughs> well, that's exactly right. <laughs> it's, 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 that's what we mostly do. I'm glad you came Very through true. at the end with that, Doug, because that, that then it didn't. It just, <clears throat> that was helpful. I, I'm I'm glad you I'm glad you did that. And I'm glad you're comfortable enough coming and and having these discussions with us. Oh, I, it's fascinating. Yeah. Well, and we're not perfect. And like I say, when I at the beginning of this, I'm just facilitating it. I don't have any of the answers. I've gone through a few of these workshops, and I've got a lot of experience. But it doesn't mean I know and I learn something every time. And I think it's important that we have this conversation about how to have conversations. Well, anyway, exactly. I'm I'm taking over. Who wants to go next? What's your ha-ha? We'll go a little bit over, but that's <laughs> Well, um, a lot of uh, locally when I'm talking is, is to like like to a hearing or city council and it's about things about uh, funding uh, uh, quack mental health issues and about the dangers of 5g and i'm thinking now that instead of uh, just these presentations i'm doing i should actually start talking to the individuals involved in uh, promoting this stuff and making decisions policy decisions so uh helpful yes another okay. another direction since i'm up against a wall now <laughs> absolutely you know and i think we should remember that a lot of the people who are who believe in this i mean fir firmly believe in this they may they may be victims of it themselves and we're thinking about facilitating communication and so on they're so invested in it that they they're not they're not lying you know what i mean they're not they're mm -hmm. not the con men they're not the person who came up with it they're not the psychic who's reading you they may not knowing right. what's happening is actually yeah right. they they exactly and they're good but, but it it needs to be true for them it's mm -hmm. not that it might be or might not it needs to be true because how else can i talk to my child mm -hmm. how else can i have a relationship with them yeah so if you tell me it's not true then you're destroying any possibility of communication with this child yeah so we need to really think of it from that perspective yeah. you can't you can't rip away all of this information in facilitated communication world if you have had conversations with your child you really believe you're having full conversations with your child and it's been going on for years when you how how can you rip that away from them and not replace it with something exactly i've wasted years you mean all that time he was telling me he loved me? I was just talking to myself or I was talking to, to the which is wishful thinking. It's just we need to think of it from their perspective. And this yeah. is, is not it's not simple. And like I said, they they may not be in on the con. You know, they're, <laughs> exactly. they're believers and they they're victims as much as anybody else. So other aha moments, Romero and Faith and and even Adrian last. I mean, maybe an aha moment for me was uh, I just <laughs> go ask the my friend, hey, let's go look at your hair dryer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Compare the patterns. <laughs> it didn't occur to me. Yeah. <laughs> you come out me, with but... your hair dryer. Here it is, you fool. <laughs> Let me match this up with your picture. Pull up your phone now. <laughs> yeah. But, but uh, maybe... Another one too was uh, 
uh, yeah, just be aware of the emotional state of the person and, and why their emotions are causing them to uh, latch onto those beliefs. Hey. Uh, this has just been extremely helpful. Like I'm actually going to give a talk to our skeptics group next month. And this has kind of helped me figure out how to formulate talking about difficult topics um, so that others don't feel kind of it's a threatening debunking episode, more of it's a let's let's inoculate you and give you some resources and let you know it's okay. <laughs> so, oh, good. So I have more of these videos. I mean, more of these workshops. I'm just trying to get through, every, not everybody, but a large group of people having these kinds of workshops. And I'm happy to do more of these workshops and Adrian's learning how to do them. And so that we can do them over Zoom or I can do them in person. And um, you hopefully, once you get through the series that I'm doing, will be able to put together your own workshops. Just change them however you need to. I'll give you all my notes, everything you want. And you can make them whatever you want. But I, um, I think as we start to come back after the pandemic, I think we, we need to look at best practices and how, how we're doing these things. So if you want, if you guys want me to do more of these and please, especially this first one that you're attending right now, share it. Uh, I'll put out a few more before I go to the second one, because I really want to do more of these. I really enjoy it. And I learn something every time, but, um, if you guys are getting something out of it. Okay, Adrian's second time doing this. Yeah. This time yeah I think the, the big aha moment, I think I've already said it, was when uh, really looking at those, that picture of the French dude from the perspective of the person who believes them and why they might believe it. I think that's really, really good. And to expand on that, I've been thinking about how, I, and I've heard this before, it's really good to focus on what you have in common before you have the talks about what you don't have in common. And I think that could be expanded upon as well. And maybe stress a little bit more what is like on the, re on the reading list, just didn't say it was required, but maybe stressing if anything on here, watch his YouTube video <laughs> explaining, you know, right. I, I find the, um, I, the article I found out of the reading list to me, that was the most important is the one by Brian Dunning, who says, how to be a skeptic and still remain friends, you know, mm -hmm. or still have friends. And I think of it as how to be a skeptic and still be invited parties, you know. For <laughs> <laughs> going into the breakout room, uh, knowing that that YouTube video probably would have been the most helpful thing that because I never really got to it. But so knowing, knowing that that's probably if if anything with my busy schedule that that's the one thing I should take the time out to. I don't know. You might on your runs, your next run, you might go, wow, man, I couldn't get through it. I was just. <laughs> well, uh, just at least I try watched it while biking. Oh, did you? <laughs> you yeah. watched? Well, I, yeah, listen, you listen I put it in front of my bike. He's, he's, I can see the lure, you know, and when, when I showed this and I did this video for the very, well, when I did this workshop for the very first time in Salinas, Mark Edward was there. And he's, and we're in a room with about, about eight people. And he goes, well, you guys all know who Jack Valley is, right? And we're like, nobody knew who he was. Linda, you know who he is? Did you say you had? No, I thought you guys. I do. You do? And yes, it's very important to understand that he is probably the grand old master of UFO studies. He doesn't believe that uh, UFOs are aliens, um, that he is someone who, has been in the field since uh, the mid 60s. Um, he was working with Alan Hynek um, and that he is a skeptic of the normal interpretation of UFOs and the whole phenomena. He has a Wikipedia yeah, page. A, he's a computer pardon? scientist. He's, he has a Wikipedia oh, page. Even. He's, he's a yeah, really he interesting that in the video. He, yeah, he believes really he's a, it's another dimension kind of bleeding over. He, he, he believes yeah. that there's something really weird going on and that to, to think we have any idea of what's really happening is ridiculous. And he sort uh. of could be, if you didn't know better, he just looking at this, he helped develop the first computerized map of Mars for NASA. He worked on ARPANET. Um, he claims he's also the French scientist that Steven Spielberg used no, that's true. He was. 
Yeah. So Steven there's Spielberg said that. Yeah. Or close encounters of the third. Or close encounters. So a lot of if you don't know better, this person just you know, maybe his Wikipedia page needs a little bit of an <laughs> I know somebody. But the, but you're right. On a, in he looks really credible. And I don't see anything wrong with having these conversations about no. maybe there is this thing. I think it's fascinating. I love talking about ghosts. And I love talking about a lot of stuff. But when it gets down to um, magical thinking and believing and, and, and getting into it in the, for the wrong reasons, then we get into the anti-vax, the anti, you know, the quackery stuff that actually affects a lot of us because the same rules that you use to to find credibility in this man may be the same rules that you find credibility with America's um, frontline doctors or something like that. And sure. that demons are actually, you know what yeah. I mean? So Wait, they're not? Oh, they're not? They're not. <laughs> Santa Claus is a real lie. They're when it's understanding if you don't have skeptical <laughs> inoculation skills or that that baseline, it becomes really difficult to navigate these more complex, you know, beyond Bigfoot, beyond, you know, flat earth when you get into the crazy or fringe stuff where you have people believing that somebody named Q is making these drops and then they go and cause an insurrection. Like that's yeah. Yeah. That's but but in my mind the biggest problem is that people develop a belief that is so strong that it can't be shaken by anything. It's the it's the fact that people need to find something to believe in, either their tribe or UFOs or ghosts or um, whatever it might be. So many people today are just desperate to find something, anything to grab a hold of and believe fervently. And to me, that's one of the biggest problems we have as, as people. Yeah, we don't have a community in a lot of ways. Exactly, that's, that's right. exactly so that, you right. You should come and play trivia with us on Thursday nights because you'll find a community. <laughs> find find our trivia game. Every every one of you guys have played trivia. Yes. Okay. Well, send me an email and I'll be there. Well, are you on Facebook? Yeah. Well, I. I mean, me you can find it. a link on Facebook. I will. T okay. uh, send me a friend request and I will send you a link to our. It's every Thursday night. It's All the right. same link. I, I seldom if ever go on Facebook, but yes, it's a we don't do it on Facebook, but I but I'll send hey, you but, but I yeah okay yeah yeah do that send me a Facebook friend request and then I will send you a link to our trivia game every Thursday we've never missed a Thursday 149 now even when we were at Saigon in Vegas even when we were at Saigon we still like <laughs> like ninety percent of the group was <laughs> that was so much fun anyway okay so this has been really helpful I found a lot of interesting things that are, i'm going to put together a couple more workshops if you want to share these with your friends and share the not necessarily the link to the video that i'm going to put up because i really rather them go through the class and participate like you guys have been able to do but also because um, when i put out my ne next workshop please share it i'm happy to do more of these that are um centered like linda said she really wanted to go and do this and i said well give me a day and i will put it out for you specifically and then we'll try to find some people to fit because thank you I don't want to just <laughs> thank you I. I mean that would be <laughs> i don't know i mean i can talk to linda that's cool but not i don't think it's a real workshop if it's just linda and I. <laughs> but, uh, but if you have you know six to ten people that you think you could gather together uh to do another one of these i'd be happy to put them on and and i any time zone whatever i'm retired i can do whatever but as long as it's not thursday night during my trip that's out and so i'm starting to do something monday nights too so out but other than that all right you guys very great thank you thank, thank you. you very thank much you. Thank you. nice meeting you doug see you yeah, thank you all. bye bye okay i got it in the recording hey let me in the recording